UFC 305, Duplessis versus Adesanya. The UFC is in Perth, Australia this weekend. Drake's Duplessis is defending his belt for the first time against who else but Israel Adesanya, a guy who really does not like him and a guy who DDP does not like either. Should be a really good matchup. Uh, the rest of the fights on this card are very strong as well. Uh, let's go ahead and break down these fights. First off, we have a flyweight matchup between Stuart Nickel and Jesus Aguilar. Nickel is 8-0 undefeated, coming into the UFC by way of Australia. Uh, has not come through the Contender Series circuit or really anything else. Was just kind of fighting regionally and destroying everyone, and here he is. Um, I'd say the last guy with a similar pedigree to come into the UFC from Australia was a guy like Steve Ursaig. We've seen uh, what he has accomplished up to this point. Of course, he is fighting on this card later. But yeah, Nickel pretty much has mauled everyone he's come up against. Not sure if he was fighting the toughest guys, and Aguilar will definitely be the toughest opponent he's faced to date. Um, but he definitely looks like a really solid uh, prospect. Aguilar, I think, is good as well. His only loss in the UFC, uh, including his contender series fight, is to, to, to Tetsuro Taira, who obviously is <clears throat> highly touted and could be coming up on a title shot pretty soon in his own right. I'd say his big weakness is his grappling, where Nichols seems to shine. Um, I don't think I've seen enough from Aguilar's defensive grappling to think that he can fight off the takedowns of Nickel. I think Nickel's just going to control him from, for three rounds and win a decision. Next fight is Son Kanan taking on Ricky Glenn. Uh, both these guys have had their fair share of losses as of late. Um, still, this one seems like a bit of a no-brainer to me. Glenn has been KO'd pretty brutally back-to-back. Kanan is losing, but he's losing closer fights. And I think he's just in a lot better shape than Ricky Glenn. He's going to be bigger, stronger, and quicker. And if you're all three, uh, I think you're going to defeat your opponent nine times out of ten. We're taking Kanan by decision in that matchup. Next fight is Tom Nolan taking on Alex Reyes in the lightweight division. Uh, Nolan probably should roll Alex Reyes here. Reyes has had like one or two fights in four years. Super inactive. Um, and, you know, a guy who's definitely just doesn't seem like he's fully committed um, or injuries or what have you have just really kind of derailed his career. That being said, Tom Nolan definitely has his fair share of weaknesses. Uh, he's been knocked down or knocked out in both of his UFC fights up to this point. Of course, he was uh, finishing his first fight and then was able to overcome getting knocked down to then KO his opponent most recently. So definitely defensively has a lot to work on, but that just seems to be his style. He's a super violent guy. He's not afraid to get hit if it means he can uh, get in some shots of his own. I think he KOs Reyes here. Might get hit a couple times first, but uh, I think if either of these guys, if one of them is going to fall, it's going to be Reyes. Next up, we have Jack Jenkins taking on Herbert Burns. Let's be honest, Burns is kind of on his way out. I think he's on like a three or four fight skid right now. He just is not at the same talent level as some of these guys in the UFC. I don't think he has the cardio to make it 15 minutes. His striking doesn't really, he's not really a proficient enough striker to do anything on the feet against his opponents. And on top of all that, he doesn't really have the cardio to last 15 minutes. Um, of course, he has a loss on his record as a KO due to exhaustion from strikes. Um, of course, it's tiring getting hit in the face, but I think he was tired even before he was getting hit. Jenkins is just going to punish him with leg kicks. He's got really strong kicks. Really good grappling. I think it's only a matter of time before he finds a KO, be it through landing heavy shots or through exhaustion again. So Jenkins by KO is the pick in that matchup. I think Jenkins is a pretty solid prospect in his, in his own right, and hopefully uh, he can rebound from that kind of freak injury he suffered in his last match. Next fight is Casey O'Neill taking on Luana Santos. Uh, O'Neill unfortunately hasn't really been able to put it all together in the UFC. Had a close win versus uh, Roxanne Medifieri and is on a two-fight losing skid. After that, <clears throat> most recently, Ariana Lipsky pretty much ran through her, hurt her bad on the feet, and then tapped her out on the ground. Casey O'Neill, I just, I, I just, she came in pretty 
highly touted, obviously undefeated fighter like most of these women are coming in, but you got to just think she wasn't facing the highest caliber of opponent and now that she's facing other, you know, athletic women, she's just really been struggling with that transition. Juana Santos, on the other hand, has looked really strong. Um, I think her grappling is the best attribute of any, of all of these, their two attributes. Um, so she can win it on the ground. And I see that as being the clearest path to victory for either of these fighters. I think Santos wins the decision, does it with her grappling, and honestly might be a better striker as well. Next fight up, we have Josh Kulabao and Ricardo Ramos. Kulabao has a really solid striking base, good hands. Um, he lands a lot, but he doesn't have the most power. So I think a lot of guys aren't as afraid to get hit by him and are willing to sort of get into dangerous territory and, and take risks against Kulabao. Uh, but he's super accurate. He lands a lot in his opponents. And he's taking on a guy with a pretty much the opposite end of the spectrum of a striking approach in Ramos, who only goes for highlight real KOs. He loves the spinning stuff. I really don't like seeing that out of guys. I just don't think it's really worth Edson Barbosa is really the only person who can consistently pull it off. I mean, I'm, I have a hard time really naming anyone else who's been effective consistently using that technique. Um... I really do think Ramos is just going to gas himself looking for a highlight real KO and Kulabao is just going to pour it on him in the second or third round and find a finish. So Kulabao by KO is the pick there. Next up we have a heavyweight matchup between Junior Tafa and Walter Walker. I called the upset in Walker's debut um, versus I think Lucas Breschke. I said he's a big Physically imposing guy, but the guy has absolutely no hands. I saw the, the people he was fighting to get to the UFC, and um, they are... He was fighting cans. Let's just... Let's let's call it how it is. He... You have Junior Tafa kind of on the other end of the spectrum of... He's all hands, but really has no other skill set whatsoever. Um, but for me, power is king in the heavyweight division. If you punch harder than the guy you're coming up against and you have the faster hands, I think you're going to win the fight nine times out of 10. Tafo by KO is going to be the pick here. Uh, I just really don't see Walker having much of an offensive game to try and, uh, you know, to have any sort of upper hand versus Junior Tafo, who's just going to be the much better, more powerful striker. Next is a welterweight matchup between Ling Jing Liang and Carlos Prates. Super awesome seeing the leech back after a uh, career threatening injury he sustained, sort of like a spinal injury. I think it happened in practice. Um, so good that he's back in the cage uh, and he was able to overcome that. He's a guy who obviously before the injury was I'd say he, he was a very solid fighter in the welterweight division. Pretty all around. He had good hands. He was a powerful striker. Um, had some solid wins on his resume. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, he his most notable fight was versus Chemayev where he got ragdolled, but just a bad matchup for him. Um, he's taking on a really dangerous striker in Carlos Prates here, though. Um, and it's going to be a tough first fight back in the cage for the leech. Prates has kind of burst onto the scene. He's on an eight-fight KO streak, uh, stretching back to before he was in the UFC. Of course, he's got back-to-back -back KOs in the UFC, um, most recently versus Charles Radke. Landed a vicious knee right to the stomach, and Radke just folded like a sack of potatoes. I just really don't know how much you can trust... Uh, Li Jing Liang in a fight back versus such a skilled striker. If both these guys were at full strength, I'd still probably lean Prates. And just the fact that the leech is coming off of such a layoff and obviously his body's been through a lot. We're taking Prates to win this one and all the guy does is find KOs. So <clears throat> we're taking Prates by KO. We come to the main card here. First fight is Tai Tuivasa versus Tarsino Rosenstrike. Tuivasa really just has not been all there. He's been finished four times in a row. Um, I think this is his first fight back in 
Australia. Uh, obviously, I think he's from New Zealand, but he's going to have the home crowd in that part of the world no matter what. But, I mean, not only is this guy losing, but he is has just kind of been getting dominated, finished four times in a row. Definitely thought he <clears throat> had a lot of promise, and when you can hit as hard as he can, you're going to have a shot against the guys in the heavyweight division. That's just It's really just as simple as that, but it just feels like I don't. I really don't know what is up with him. Just something isn't clicking right now. He's taking on Jorginho Rosen Strike, who's coming off of a KO win over Shamil Gaziev. Obviously, not the most dangerous guy in the heavyweight division, but Rosen Strike has definitely had more success as of late when compared to Tuivasa. I just don't know why the trend would stop here uh, versus a guy like Rosen Strike, obviously who has the kickboxing background and. <clears throat> if he lands, he's going to hurt you. So Rosen Strike by KO is going to be the pick there. Definitely would love to see Tuivasa get uh, back on track with a win here, though. Moving along in the main card, we have a lightweight matchup between Matoush Gamrot and Dan Hooker. Hooker has kind of been rebounding as of late uh, after going through definitely a rough patch where tried to move to 145 he was getting KO'd there getting KO'd at 155 but he's coming off of back-to-back -back wins versus Claudio Pleas and a potential fight of the year contender in his Jalen Turner fight um Hooker definitely is going to have the striking edge here but Gamera is just such a tough matchup with being a cardio menace and having that strong wrestling background He's pretty much been able to take down everyone he's come up against. Uh, guys like uh, Benil Dariush, um, Armand Sarukian, much stronger wrestlers than Dan Hooker. And I just don't know if Hooker has the cardio or has the defensive grappling to keep Gamrat off of him. Poyace definitely had more of a grappling approach and he was able to sort of overcome that and had a really good performance there. But Gamrod is a, on a different level and just comes in with a different approach to the wrestling. I think he's just going to blast through Hooker and just double leg him for 15 minutes and win a unanimous decision. Our co-main event, it is Kai Kara France taking on Steve Ursag uh, in a super interesting flyweight matchup here. Let's be honest, Ursag was... Five minutes from taking the belt from Alessandre Pantoja. He felt just short. And all in all, I kind of came away from that fight thinking that Urseg was probably the more skilled, probably the better guy that night. And he really just kind of did it to himself, trying to scramble with Pantoja rather than just sticking to the striking. And I think he would have outstruck Pantoja on his way to a decision victory there. So... Definitely, there's no question about the talent of Steve Ursig, uh, but it did feel like his immaturity cost him in that matchup. He's got the wrestling. He's got really good boxing. He can counter punch. Um, he can push the pace. He really does it all. He's taking on a guy with a very strong striking background in Kai Kara France. Definitely, he's uh, he's definitely going to be Ursig's best striking opponent. Um, I don't think he's ever really faced a guy quite like Kai Kara France. Of course, Kai has had his ups and downs as well. He's only like a career, he only wins like two thirds of his fights in the UFC. But um, he's come up against Brandon Moreno twice. That's two L's right there against, you know, one of the better flyweights in recent memory. There's no question that he's one of the most skilled fighters in that division. And I really felt like he was coming off of his one of his best performances to date versus Amir Albazi, and the refs just completely robbed him of what could have been a huge, uh, huge win for him to get closer to that title shot. Um, so this massive implications for both of these guys, Urseg, or both of them are trying to avoid a two fight losing streak. Um, Kai's definitely gonna have the experience edge here, and I think he's gonna surprise Urseg and give him some looks in the striking that Ursig just hasn't really seen before. <clears throat> Pantoja is a much more, you know, uh, conservative, keeps it to, you know, his 
jabs and straights, doesn't really switch it up quite as much as Kai, who's going to mix in the leg kicks, going to throw a lot of looks at Ursig, and I don't know, the lack of experience I could see kind of throwing Ursig off. So we're going to take Kai Carlfrantz by decision here. Um, should be a really close fight, and Ursig definitely, uh, it's definitely going to be a close one, and there's definitely a path for Ursig to win this one. I just would side with Kai Carlfrantz more often than not, just due to his striking uh, abilities and experience. Finally, we have our main event for the middleweight title. It's DDP taking on Israel Adesanya. A lot of question marks coming into this one from both guys. Um, both debatably lost. Well, one debatably lost to Sean Strickland. One absolutely got dominated and pantsed in front of the whole world versus Sean Strickland. Of course, DDP is the one who came away with the victory in that most recent title bout. Um, I'll be honest, I doubted DDP quite a bit when he was coming up. Uh, he just didn't really pass the eye test for me. Definitely a big, strong, physically imposing dude, but he just had so many memeable moments, like trying to throw, um, trying to throw guys and landing up on his back. You know, he had honestly his hands full with Darren Till, who couldn't buy a win versus basically anyone. Uh, leading into that fight but the guy let's be honest he, he wins he's got a phenomenal record I think he's something like 21 and 4 or something you don't that doesn't really happen by uh, by accident and he's kind of been in other big promotions so it's not like he's been fighting uh, you know bus drivers to accumulate that kind of record the guy just knows how to win he's super gritty super powerful and he might not have, you know, the fanciest striking, but it, it kind of works for him. Um, definitely had a lot of trouble with Sean Strickland. I felt Sean won that fight, although I wasn't going to cry about DDP winning that. It was super close. Um, <clears throat> I thought Sean was the more effective striker, but DDP did, I think, cut him at one point. Um, definitely a super close fight here. Adesanya is making his return to the octagon and uh, of course Strickland did pretty crazy things to Adesanya that honestly no one had done to him up to that point. Obviously Adesanya had lost to Pereira going into that fight but we've never seen him get stalked for 25 minutes and be that timid against anyone. Even, even Izzy's fight versus Pereira didn't go down like that. So I definitely worry about that performance and I'm having a hard time forgetting about that. Um, but if there's anyone who just kind of lives for these moments, who's gonna shine when the lights are brightest, I do think it is Izzy. Um, I don't know if he's ever lost twice in a row in his career. Um, and you know, it seems like just when you wanna count him out, he comes in and does something crazy. I will say I think DDP is a much better matchup for Izzy than, um, or sorry, I think Strickland was the much better matchup versus Izzy than DDP. I think Strickland was uh, much more of the pressuring fighter than we're going to see out of DDP. I think we're going to see a slightly more timid approach. Um, and let's be honest, Izzy has the skills to neutralize DDP's offense. It's just, is he going to have the grit? Um, and truthfully, it's hard to say. I'm going to go and side with the guy who's just whenever you think he's down, he always just seems to do something spectacular. And that is Israel Adesanya. Seems like the, S the UFC definitely wants him back in the mix. He's a huge star. Um, he's got just that crazy kickboxing uh, skill set to rely on versus DDP who... I think he's going to be able to get reads on and pretty much be able to neutralize. So Izzy by decision is going to be the pick here. With that, that is the breakdown. I hope you all enjoyed. Like and subscribe and whatnot. We will obviously catch you on the next one.